dear students today we are going to start with a new lecture on the geometric design we have already completed module 1 and in module 1 we covered definition of geometric design the various factors which affect the geometric design the requirement of spaces so as to provide for different categories of roads that means the lateral direction which we are talking here and the side distance requirements under the different traffic operation conditions as well as the terrain conditions. Now, once we have completed or we got this particular idea, the next thing which we can start with is the idea about the cross sectional profiles which can be provided for different categories of roads. Now, when we talk about these different categories of roads, these can be expressways, they can be urban roads or streets, there are rural highways and specifically we are talking about the national highway sections and then the multi lane highways are also there. So, these are the divided systems which are 4 lane divided or the 6 lane divided systems and then all of these things are going to have different cross sections depending on what type of traffic is going to ply on that as well as what is the terrain condition, what is the amount of land which is available for the development of that category of road. So, in this particular direction let us start first of all with the expressways and urban roads. So, in this we are going to look at the various cross sectional profiles which can be provided and as I said they will be varying subjective to the change in the operational condition subjective to the change in the terrain condition. But many of the things you will find they are going to remain the same. What I will insist to you is that do not go by the values which have been provided in these cross sections. What you should emphasize is to understand and to see that what are the various elements which are provided in the cross sectional profile. So, in this direction the very first one is a 4 lane expressway and this 4 lane expressway section which is being shown here is for a plain and rolling terrain and is being provided with a depressed median. So, in the center what you can see that there is a wide depressed median being provided and this wide depressed median in this particular case is 30 meters wide. So, you can understand the amount of land which is gone into just providing this median. But the function of providing this median is not only to separate the traffic which is moving in the opposite directions, but it is also having one another function in terms of the future expansion of a road. When the future expansion of a road system takes place, say in this particular case what you can see is there is a carriageway being provided and this is a two lane carriageway because 7.5 meter wide uh, carriageway is provided here. So, it means this is a four lane divided system, two lanes on this side and two lanes on the other side of the median, but suppose today tomorrow we are going to make it a eight lane system that means four more lanes will be required, four more lanes means we are requiring 14 meters of land and that 14 meter of land will come out of this 30 meters of the median. And that is why in the very starting when this type of a new development has taken place considering what are the possibilities of the future expansion which may happen in 5, 10 or 15, 20 years from now, we should go for a wide median in between. Now, apart from the median, the another thing as I talked is a carriageway, then there are shoulders and these shoulders can be paved shoulders, they can be earthen shoulders. There will be side slope on the side is this particular side as well as on the other side it is being given. Then there is an edge strip which defines that there is an end of the carriageway that the paved area which can be used by the vehicles to move on. There will be some extra land being provided on the side and this extra land can be say in this particular case being provided as 15.5 meters on this side as well as on the other side. And then apart from that at the end a 2 meter wide strip is provided and this 2 meter wide strip can be defined as a verge strip and it is being used as a utility corridor where the utilities can be provided say in terms of the telephone lines, the water pipelines all of these things they can be placed in this particular corridor in this particular width and that can be done on both of the sides. But another specific feature you would must have seen here is a provision of a fencing. Now, provision of fencing is required because this is a high speed facility and expressway is being provided. Traffic will be moving at a speed of say 80 or 100 or 120 kilometers per hour and if there is any intrusion from the sides like this, then this will 
culminate into an hazardous situation. Now, so as to omit this particular condition, it is always good that we provide fencings on the sides. Now, in this case, half of the section is being shown as a filled section and half of the section has been shown in the cut section. It all depends in which particular terrain you are, if there is a requirement to go for certain cutting, but still you can maintain as a plane and rolling condition, then this is how the sections can be provided. The only change which will be there is that uh, in the case of a cut section, there is another drain being provided at top which is also defined as a catch water drain and this takes off the water which is coming from the upper area and drains it away and it will not allow it to come to the pavement section. But at the edge of the pavement section, there is another drain which is already being provided in the longitudinal direction to take care of the drainage here. Then another aspect which can be seen is that 2.5 percent or 3 percent and an arrow is being shown that you are going in either this direction or you are going in this direction this is a camber being provided, this is another element of the cross sectional profile and the percent in which this particular slope is provided depends on again the rainfall intensity and the type of the construction being done. We will be discussing all of these things when we take up these type of elements one by one. One thing which you can see here is that in the case of a shoulder, the percent value is higher as compared to the carriageway. That means the water should drain much faster in those areas which are not paved and uh, otherwise, it will remain there as such. Now, this is another case where a flush median is being provided. That means, instead of having something like 30 meters wide median in the center, we are talking here of a median which is only 4.5 meters wide. So, that itself defines that it is a constrained area or restricted area where the availability of land may not be that much and that is where we need to go for this type of a construction. But if the land is available as being shown here that the open area is there, then all rest of the features remains the same. You have the median, you have the carriageway, you have the shoulders which may be paved and unpaved. You have the open area on the two sides which is an extra land, you have drains, you have fencings. So, all these things will be there and apart from that, the utility corridors has also to be there at the side as 2 meter wide corridors. Here, three photographs have been shown. In the first photograph, which is Mumbai Pune Expressway, what you can see is it is a restricted condition. The terrain is very rugged. It is a mountainous terrain where it can be mountainous as well as a steep condition may arise at any of the location and that is where though the lanes have been provided, you can see this is a six lane divided system. So, three lanes on either side of the median are there. In the center, the median is not wide, it is a flush median which will be taking not more than say 4.5 meters wide width of the, this particular road section. And then at the end, a parapet wall is provided so as to provide a safety psychological feature to this particular section as well as to the drivers who are driving their vehicle on this section. But if you look at the second section which is shown in the center, it is for Durgapur Highway Expressway where you can find that there is a depressed median in the center and it is being provided with the bushes and that not only gives it an aesthetic or the pleasing outlook, but at the same time it also helps in reducing the glare which comes out of the headlights of the vehicles during the night time. The third one which is Himalayan Expressway in Haryana, the one feature which exclusively needs to be looked at is on this side which is a crash barrier. Now, this crash barrier is being provided because the section on the other side is going at a much lower level. So, there is a difference in the level of the sections and so as to protect the vehicles which may fall from this side and just overrun on the other section and hit the vehicles which are moving on that particular section, this crash barrier needs to be provided. Apart from that, there is another feature as being shown here is a curve stone and this curve stone is being painted as a white and or black in alternate strips and that defines the edge of the section on the other side. So, this is also another important element which will be discussed. Now, coming to the urban roads, in the case of urban roads, there is a classification like arterial roads, subarterial roads, character roads and the uh, local streets. So, we are starting here with the arterial roads. So, in this arterial road, half of the section has been shown where the carriageways are there. So, this is a carriageway and this is again a carriageway. 
there is a reserve area which can be defined as a median and then there is again a median being provided which can also be utilized as a utility area which can also be utilized or named as verge where the utilities can be provided. Apart from that there will be a cycle track if there is more of the cyclist in this area if that is not a case then this can be omitted and then there is a footpath for the people who are walking on the side. It all depends what type of uh, development is there on the road side of this particular arterial road. So, the requirement of the cycle track, the requirement of the footpath has to be seen by you uh, depending on the site. Apart from that in the center a wide median can be provided and this wide median again will have the same functionality that it not only separates the traffic which is moving in the opposite direction, but it also allows you to take some space out of this median subjective that in future you require some extra land for the expansion of this facility. So, instead of a two lane say the three lanes have to be provided in one direction here in this case moving in this particular direction say the so three meters can be taken from the median and can be provided. So, that is possible in this case and because already 7.5 meter has been provided. So, this 0.5 meter goes to this 3 meter and you will get a lane of 3.5 meter wide. Service road has been provided as a 7.5 meters and that is also an important aspect in the case of arterial roads because there is a through traffic which is moving on the main carriageway and there is a local traffic which will be moving on this service road. So, these are the separations which are required. This is a sub arterial condition. In the case of sub arterial condition not much differences are going to be there as far as the specifications are concerned. You can have a cycle track, you can have a sidewalk or a footpath. There can be a verge which can be utilized for the provision of utilities. There will be the carriageway which is being provided here, but apart from this carriageway if we are allowing to park the vehicles on this particular system under certain conditions of the traffic uh, movement, then a parking lane can also be provided. Here a 3 meter wide parking lane has been shown and as can be seen in this uh, photograph also there is a parking lane being provided and this is being separated from a cycle track by way of the marking on the pavement. So, a separator is there in this form and the cycle track then is provided and then beyond the cycle track there is a multi utility or a multi functional zone in which say arboriculture can be done, the signs can be placed etcetera and apart from that then there is a sidewalk. So, this is the urban area development or a roads development in particular area. Apart from that again we have the median in the center as you can see here. So, this can be 2 to 5 meters wide. So, here the width is reducing a bit as compared to the arterial section. Then in the case of collector streets there can be three different sections as being shown here. In the first section if we look at this is for a four lane undivided section it means 14 meters carriageway is being provided in the center and then the verges are provided on the either of the sides which is again 2 meters and the cycle track and the sidewalk are there. In the second case this is a 4 lane divided system it means a median will come now in picture. So, what we have is a 2.5 meter wide median which is a raised median in this particular case and then the carriageway is being provided which is a 2 lane carriageway here and a 2 lane carriageway. So, it means 3.5 meter into 27 meters and 0.5 meter means it is a 0.25 meters of a curb shy on either side. So, there is a curb shy here and there is a curb shy here which is 0.25 meters and that constitutes 7.5 meters. The third section as being shown at the bottom is for a two lane system. So, it is a more simpler system there may not be much of the traffic and that is why this is sufficient. The only thing which is changing is that uh, here this is being separated from a cycle track by way of only a 1 meter wide either a raised system which may be paved which may be unpaved or it can be in terms of a, a pavement marking also. Okay. But apart from that because you are moving in an area where the pedestrian activities are possibly more so in all of these cases what we see is that the footpaths needs to be provided on either side. Then there is a local street case. In the case of local street case again different type of sections can be there. Say if we talk about the section 1 where the sidewalks are provided. This is a normal condition which can be there. 
in any of the residential area or in any of the densely developed area where the traffic is also there, where the pedestrians are also there. So, it means this sidewalk needs to be provided on either side of it. And the width of the carriageway that can be reduced even to 6 meters in this particular case, it all depends on the traffic volume intensity. There is a local street which can be defined as cul-de-sac. So, it is a case that uh, the road goes into an area and then there is a development in this area and this road ends here. So, there means there is the development which goes in this form. So, it is an internal type of road in that development. So, this closes there itself. Now, this can be a 3.5 meters wide carriageway or desirably if we can provide, we can have a 5 meter wide carriageway. It very easily allows the two way movement of the traffic on this road. And apart from that, because again this development is going to be there, we should have the sidewalks on either side of this system. Then the third one is where the separated sidewalks are being provided. So, the traffic may be quite more in this particular case and therefore, we need to segregate out the sidewalks and that is what is being done. So, 2 to 3 meters wide sidewalk is there which is being separated by a verge and verge as we discussed previously too is a utility area which is 2 meters wide and then apart from that at the end if there is a requirement of this space is available a 1 meter unpaved section can also be provided. Now, let us look at the rural highway section. Now, this rural highway section is in the plain and rolling terrain. Now, here what you can see is that again the carriageways are provided. So, 7 meter wide carriageway means this is a two lane highway and then this two lane highway is provided with the shoulders on the either side and these shoulders are paved as well as unpaved. The paved shoulder is going to have the same section as is there for the carriageway and unpaved shoulder which will be of uh, some granular material and it will all depend. The thickness of the granular material which needs to be provided will be based on the, the traffic intensity and the category of the road sections which are provided. But in this particular case usually 150 mm thickness is sufficient and those things will be taken up when we will take up the shoulders in detail. Now, here again the camber is being provided or there may be a possibility of providing a super elevation subjective there is a curved section and we need to cut, take care of the centrifugal force which is acting on that particular section. Then there is an open area which is available. So, the width of this open area will vary depending on the how much land is available. But yes, we are not usually going to infinite amount of land which is to be procured. This there is a limit up to which we can go. It all depends on that uh, this two lane highway tomorrow if it is to be upgraded then whether it is going to be upgraded for a 4 lane divided system or a 6 lane divided system accordingly that much land should be there at the start itself. Apart from that as I told in the previous case also a 2 meter wide utility strip has to be there or the watch has to be there on either side so as to house the various utility items. Now, this is a case of a plain and uh, rolling terrain but with a service road condition. Now, here the service road is provided on either side that means uh, there can be a possibility of a local traffic and that necessitates that the service road should be provided. As far as the central portion is concerned whatever we have discussed in the previous one remains the same. The only addition is that there is a service road which can be say 5.5 meter wide carriageway along with an other shoulders on either of the side. If uh, no pedestrian activity is there then the other shoulders can be provided. If the pedestrian activities are there, then we need to provide the footpath so that they can move on a separated facility and there is no hazardous situation which arises because of the interaction of vehicles and pedestrians. Apart from that, the drains are also being provided. So, multiple drains are provided because uh, they are the sections which have been separated out from each other. So, this is one another important aspect which needs to be taken care of and then as being talked the utility area or uh, the functional area so as to provide the utilities is uh, there, the verge is there which is 2 meters wide in this case again. Now, in many of the cities if these highways are passing through that then there is a functional problem in the case of those particular cases. The traffic cannot move at the speed, the designated speed or the design speed for which that highway has been constructed and that necessitates that we should go for a construction of a bypass. 
Now, when this bypass is being constructed today, it may happen that there may not be a requirement of constructing a four lane or six lane system, but tomorrow it may be requirement. So, depending on those type of traffic projections, we have to see that how much width has to be constructed today. If it has been observed that there may not be a requirement of providing all of the lanes today itself, so as to cater the traffic which is coming and which is going to pass on this bypass, we can have this uh, eccentrically placed bypass. What does that mean is that we have the land which is going up to this point to this point. So, this is the total area, the total land which is being acquired for the construction of the bypass, but half of the section of the bypass only has been constructed. So, we can say that this is the center line of the alignment and then one part of the bypass has been constructed, say the two lane system has been constructed here and the two lane system can be constructed tomorrow as the, the requirement arises maybe 5 years down the lane or the 10 years down. So, uh, this is how the stage construction can also be taken care of and at the same time when the this new construction will be taken up, the traffic will keep moving on this uh, two lane system which is already existing and once this new system comes up, then the traffic may be allowed to move on this and this particular old system can go into the maintenance also. So, there will not be any problem and it will not create much of the problem to the traffic which is moving on this type of a system. But as far as the elements are concerned, we will have the carriageway, we will have the camber, the shoulders, the slopes, the uh, extra space which is to be provided, the drains and then the spaces to have so as to house the various utilities. This is a case for a heli terrain. In the case of heli terrain, the slope as you can see is going towards the hillside. There is a drain being provided on the hillside. The shoulder on this side, hillside is a paved shoulder, but on the other side we have a paved as well as a unpaved shoulder. And then there is a construction on the valley side so as to sustain this particular road section here. If the slope is not there, if suppose the slope has been there in this form which has been a stable slope, then this uh, type of a, a retaining wall is not required to be constructed. But if this retaining wall is being constructed, then there are weave holes so that whatever water comes to this drains out and will not remain inside the section. Otherwise, this section will slowly and slowly deteriorate. Now, let us come to the multi-lane highways. Now, as I said, in the case of multi-lane highways, we will be talking about the four-lane systems and we will also be talking about the six-lane systems. Now, here, the first case which we are taking is a four lane divided system which is in a plane in rolling terrain. So, not much differences are going to be there as far as the elements which we have discussed previously, they will remain as such. But the only thing is that how they have been placed, what are the widths which are being provided and what are the additional things which may be there in these type of high speed facilities or divided facilities is what we need to take care of. So, if you look at in the center, there is a median being provided and this median can be a depressed median, but the width of this median here say is 7 meters only being shown, but if the land is available, it is an open country, then we can go for a much wider median also. And the reason I have already stated, tomorrow if a, it has to be upgraded from 4 lane to a 6 lane system, then the land will be acquired here only in the center because tomorrow as this road comes up, there will be development on the side of the road and there may not be a additional land available on the other side. So, looking at that particular feature, it is always better to have an extra land for the upgradation of a facility in the center of the road in terms of the median. Then carriageways are there on the sides and the shoulders are there which are paved shoulder and the unpaved or the earthen shoulders. The drain system is there, some extra land if it is available is being provided and then finally, we have the space so as to house the utilities. So, this is one type of a section which can be there. Now, when the width of this depressed median is not much, then it is always advisable to go for the provision of the crash barrier. And this crash barrier has been provided at the edge of the carriageway at some particular distance and that distance is around 0.6 meters. In the case of expressways, it can be 0.75 meters. This is another case where the extension is coming in terms of the service road on either side of the central section. 
Now, when you look at the central section, the central section which we discussed in the previous slide that remains the same, there is no change in it. But if you look at the side, then we have a 7 meter wide service road and this service road is being provided with an ardent shoulder on either side which is 1.5 meters wide and then there is an space for the provision of utilities. So, now this provision of utilities which was previously being provided some way here has shifted to the side. So, that means whenever that space is to be marked for the provision of the utilities, it has to be at the extreme side and which defines the right of way or the road land margins which will be there, the total land which is to be acquired here. Then there is another case where the service roads have not been provided, but instead of a depressed median, the raised median has been provided. Now, when you have a raised median, when a structure has been provided in this form, so this is a raised median being constructed, maybe a concrete construction or the uh, carb stones being used and it is being filled in the center by some other material, whatever the way it is being done, there is some space which is being left on either side of this median and that is a curb shy or the safety margin type of a space has to be there. And that is the reason that in here when you have a 4 meter construction with 0.5 meter of this curb shy, it becomes total 5 meter size of the median. So, whatever this 5 meter size we are talking here, it includes the curb shy and that is how the construction should be done if you are being placed in any of the consulting organization or if you are a part of any construction industry related to roads, then this is what needs to be taken care of. The other case is a carriageway and then what we have are the shoulders on the side. So, these two shoulders are there, then the drain is there, extra space is there and the space for the provision of the utilities is also there. And those lane markings are there, you might have seen in the previous some of the slides too, they are being defined as pavement markings. So, the lanes have to be marked, the edges have to be marked and that is the requirement in terms of the safety provision so that the traffic keeps moving in an orderly manner. Here the service roads are being provided, but at the same time the internal section remains the same because this is a restricted area. So, wide uh, depressed median has not been provided, the raised median has been provided, the addition is in terms of this area on the either of the side and that remains the same as we have discussed previously in terms of a service road. So, here also you have a 7 meter wide carriageway which is paved and then you have ordinary shoulders on the either side and then finally, the utility zone. Then this is uh, another case where you find that it is for a built up area and the width of the median has reduced further. In previous case we talked about 5 meter wide and that 5 meter wide median has 4 meter construction with 0.5 meter of the margin on either side of it. Here we have a 1.5 meter wide construction and then 0.5 meter wide margin on either side of it and that makes it 2.5 meters. Apart from that, the th rest of the things are not going to change. So, we will have the carriageways being provided, we will have the paved shoulder. Now, because it is a built up area, the earthen shoulders will not be possible to be provided. So, only the paved shoulder is being provided here and then there is a separator which separates it from the service road. So, it can also be in terms of a median not much wide median, but a median which is raised in nature can be provided here. And then in the case of a service road elements, we have the carriageway which is say 7.5 meters wide and then a footpath and this footpath may have a drain at the bottom of it. So, this is a <coughs> double utility system which will be happening and then utility area which is 2 meters wide, a verge area is being provided. Now, this footpath which is being provided along with the drain has a minimum width of 1.5 meters, but then this is to be looked at in terms of the uh, facilities for pedestrians. The IRC guidelines are there, they keep revising. So, kindly look at that uh, before deciding that what should be the minimum width that has to be provided. Here in this case, it is being shown as 1 meter. So, by mistake it has come, it has to be minimum 1.5 meters as being talked on the other side. But now it has been increased and now we are talking about 2 meter wide uh, footpaths. This is a case in the mountainous terrain. 
So, in a mountainous terrain the slope is being taken up towards the hill side. So, a side drain is provided which goes all along in the longitudinal direction a paved shoulder is there on the side of the carriageway. But on the valley side you have a paved shoulder as well as you have a earthen shoulder. And so, as to protect the edges a retaining wall is being constructed. So, it becomes a more stable section in this case. In the center we have a raised median. So, the traffic is being separated out, but then this because we already have a constraints of uh, land in the mountainous terrain. So, we cannot go to a much wider system. So, that is where we are having a 2.5 meter wide median only. And on the hill side as uh, I talked previously too, there is a catch water drain. So, whatever water comes from the hill side is being taken care of here and it goes all alongside and then only this water as well as the water coming from the pavement side which will be taken care of by the longitudinal side drain. This is a case of uh, a divided system, but not being constructed together because the contours are not allowing to do so. So, there is a problem of contours here and that is the reason one side is being constructed here and another side is being constructed at another contour system. Now, when you talk here about the this raised footpath being provided, it means it is coming in a built up area. There may be number of activities in this area and the pedestrians may be present that is why this raised footpath has to be provided and it has to be secured then the retaining wall has to be provided on the valley side. If these pedestrians are not there, then this can be provided in the form of a paved shoulder also, which will be obviously at the level of the carriageway. This is uh, again another case where the different contours are there and as I was talking about, then we are not providing here the footpath because the pedestrians are not available. It is an open country condition. On the valley side again we will have two cases in the case of a shoulder, one is paved and one is an earthen shoulder and then the retaining wall is provided so as to protect the section and rest of the things they are going to remain the same. So, these are the various sections which we can look at for four lane divided systems. Now, we are going to talk about the six lane divided systems. The six lane divided systems are also going to remain in the same form as we have looked in the case of a four lane divided systems, but there may be few changes. Obviously, the change will come in terms of the width of the carriageway, one more lane has been added. So, here we are talking about this section in a plain and rolling terrain, a wide depressed median can be provided. If it is not wide as we did talk in the case of a four lane system, then the crash barriers has to be provided so as to protect the vehicles which can move either this direction or this direction and collide with each other. On the edges, the shoulders which may be paved and unpaved, the drains, the open area, the utility area, all of these things will remain the same. This is a case with the service road as we did talk about a service road in the case of a four lane system. Here also we have a carriageway which is 7 meters wide and an earthen shoulder on either side which is 1.5 meters wide has been provided here and then at the end a verge area or a utility area 2 meters wide is there. Rest of the section remains the same. There is no change in this particular section as we talked about in the previous case. The change is coming in this particular section here even though it is still for a plane and rolling terrain is in terms of the reduction and as well as the change in the type of the median which is being provided. Here the raised median is being provided and we talked about this raised median and we said that it is 4 meters constructed area with 0.5 meters of a curve shy on either side and that makes is a 5 meter wide raised median structure. Apart from that the 3 lanes on this side as well as 3 lanes on the other side the shoulder area which is paved and unpaved, the drain, the open area and the utility area, they all remains the same as we have discussed previously. Now, in this case we again have the service roads being provided on either side. There is a again the raised median being provided in this case. Okay, so, you have this uh, 1.5 meter wide earthen shoulder and then the 2 meter wide verges on the other side. So, these are the things which remains the same, but in this case when you look at type B, 
there is a change coming at this side where after the paved shoulder there is no earthen shoulder instead of earthen shoulder we have one space being provided and this space is again 1.75 meters wide what it is being provided as 1.5 meters when 0.25 meters of uh, the shy distance with respect to the railing as being provided here. So, wherever some obstruction is there that obstruction should have some safety margin some shy distance. So, the vehicles remains away from it. So, that is a difference which is coming in these two cases. Another case which is a change here is in terms of a provision of a footpath or a provision of a footpath with a drain collectively on the side. So, this is again all depends upon that what type of uh, area through which this section is passing we need to see whether we have to go for the earthen shoulder conditions or we have to go for a footpath provision. Here in this case this is a case for upgradation from a 4 lane to a 6 lane system, but then uh, uh, in the center if it is a raised median which is already being provided as a 5.5 meter only thing is that we need to have one lane and if the open area was available on this side then this one lane could have come from that side. If it has been a depressed median and a wide depressed median which is something like 12 meters or more then there would have been a possibility to take this extra lane in the center itself. So, now again it all depends that uh, uh, what type of section is already being there and accordingly the decisions has to be taken by you as an engineer to go for an upgradation. There are two sections being shown here again in this section this is with a service road another one is also with a service road, but the change is here in the provision of uh, or the changeover from a main carriageway which is a three lane carriageway to the service road. So, here the earthen shoulders and the paved shoulders and an open space has been provided with a drain in the center, but in the other case we have a restricted conditions and therefore, they have been provided with a, uh, some uh, unpaved area which is 1.75 meters wide because there is a railing being provided. So, that no intrusion is there from the service road onto the main carriageway. Another thing which can be seen is in this particular case there probably is a more restricted conditions and a more restricted conditions than the width of the median will reduce further, but you cannot go below a minimum width which needs to be provided. So, when we will take up the medians we will see that what are the minimum widths which needs to be provided in different cases. So, here what you can find is a 3 meter wide median is provided that means it is 2 meters construction with 0.5 meter on either side as a curb shy. Now, these are two more sections as being defined as C1 and C2 they are being provided in a mountainous terrain. And again what you can see is that in this mountainous terrain they are not being provided on the same level they are on two different locations that is location 1 and location 2 and that is coming out because of the control contour conditions. And this contour condition we did, did talk about in the case of a four lane system also. So, here if a retaining wall has been provided then on this side the paved shoulder is going up to the retaining wall and the paved shoulder is being provided on the hill side with the drains being there. In the other case if it is a built up area or if there are pedestrian activities then the footpaths are to be provided instead of a paved shoulder. So, you have 10.5 meters wide carriageway which is three lane system along with the footpath and whatever the minimum width of the footpath is there ap apart from that there is going to be a 0.5 meter of a side margin as a safety margin which has to be there because this is a raised facility. There is a C3 and C4 designs are also there, but in this C3 and C4 design what you can see is that all of the section is coming on the same level or the same location. It means there is no problem with respect to the width available at a contour and so the six lanes have been provided here along with the median in the center and the paved shoulders on either side or a raised footpath on either side depending on whether or not the pedestrians are available in this particular area. So, this is how uh, the changes can be there whether we are talking about a mountainous terrain, talking about a plain terrain or a rolling terrain or whatever the category of road is being talked. You need to look at the users who are there and accordingly you have to provide a provision for those particular users. So, 
we stop here.